Welcome to this first video presentation on acids and bases. Acid and base compounds are very common in our everyday experiences and products, so let's review some of these before we begin. Here are some common acid products or substances that contain acids, including things like brick cleaner, car battery acid, vinegar, lemons, vitamin C, souring milk and rhubarb leaves. And here are some compounds which we associate with bases, including baking soda, washing soda, caustic soda found in drain cleaner and oven cleaner, antacids, limestone which is calcium carbonate, and many household disinfectants which contain ammonia. Let's start at the beginning. In this presentation, we'll start by reviewing some of the content covered at Year 11 in Junior Science to re-familiarise yourself with the concepts you should already have some understanding of. Then we'll take a closer look at what an acid or base actually is and give you a concrete definition of them. We will introduce the term conjugate and describe a conjugate acid-base pair. And finally, we'll show you how to complete an acid-base proton transfer equation. Let's start at the beginning. What is an acid? You can probably provide me with lots of ideas about what acids are, including naming some or giving me the formula of some particularly hydrochloric acid or even acetic acid. Or you could give me a list of ideas about acids, including litmus or pH. But what you're doing is actually describing what an acid does, in other words, what its properties are. And this is what it's focused on at Year 11. The properties of acid compounds include their colours with different acid base indicators, including litmus, we should all know that acids turn litmus indicator red, that acids turn universal indicator red, orange or yellow, and hopefully you can recall using phenolphthalein for our acid-base titrations. Acids are colourless when used with phenolphthalein indicator. You should also know that acids have pH values which are less than 7, and we use indicator strips, universal indicator or pH meters to measure this. You should recall that acids react with metals making bubbles of hydrogen gas, and acids react with bases in neutralisation reactions. But none of these descriptions define what an acid actually is. They just describe what an acid does. So we need to come up with a better definition of what actually is an acid. We'll do this shortly. Before we do, let's review two key reactions of acids that you should be familiar with, so we've covered some background. The first of these is the reaction of acids with metals, particularly reactive metals like calcium, magnesium or zinc, which is shown by this general equation. Acids react with metals to produce hydrogen gas and a salt. And if we look at an example using hydrochloric acid with magnesium metal, the salt product here would be magnesium chloride, a very typical reaction that we use in junior science. In this reaction, the acid is able to remove the electrons of the atoms of the metal, forming a metal cation. So as you can see, the magnesium is losing electrons to form Mg2+, the magnesium ion. The hydrogen ions of the acid gain two electrons and form a molecule of hydrogen gas. And you might recall oil rig from redox, so this is actually an oxidation reduction reaction involving acids. The chloride ions in this reaction are not involved and are spectator ions, so by evaporating off the water, you would form crystals of magnesium chloride. The second key reaction of acids is with bases. This of course is your typical neutralisation reaction. The first reaction that you would have learnt in junior science. When an acid and base combine, they form water in a neutral salt. And this common example is a reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, forming the salt of sodium chloride. If you look at the reaction in more detail, the hydrogen ions from the acid are combining with the hydroxide ions from the base, forming the water molecule. The spectator ions in this reaction, sodium and chloride, will form crystals of sodium chloride once the water is evaporated off. Bases also include carbonate compounds, which produce an additional product of carbon dioxide gas. Here is a typical reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium carbonate, which is a key component of washing soda. And this is how we often produce carbon dioxide in the lab for lime water testing and experiments. Now let's move on to the definition of an acid, and consequently the definition of a base. 
Previously, you might have said that an acid contains a hydrogen ion. This is correct. All acids must contain hydrogen, but more specifically, they must contain a hydrogen that can be ionized. Not all hydrogen atoms in compounds are acidic. Think about all the hydrogen atoms that an organic molecule has, like hexane, and we all know that most organic molecules are not acids. All of these compounds are acids, and all of these contain a hydrogen which can be ionized, so let's have a look at that. Here is hydrogen nitrate, which has one acidic hydrogen. When dissolved in water, this molecule ionizes and loses this hydrogen ion into water. This is hydrogen phosphate. When ionized, it loses its three hydrogens to form phosphoric acid. And hydrogen sulfate has two hydrogen ions, and when dissolved in water, ionizes to form sulfuric acid. And this is the structure of ethanoic acid with its one hydrogen ion that can be ionized. Note the other three hydrogens, which are bonded to the carbon atom, cannot be ionized as this is the structure of the basic hydrocarbon. So we need a more precise definition of an acid. An acid is a species that donates a hydrogen ion and the base is a species that accepts it. So all acids must have a hydrogen ion which can be given to a base. Note here a hydrogen ion is often referred to as a proton, as of course it contains no electrons or neutrons. So we sometimes refer to acids as being a proton donor. Now let's look at bases. Previously you might have said that a base contains a hydroxide ion like these compounds. Or you might have said that bases can be neutralized by acids like these compounds. Or you might have given me a definition referring to other anions like this. Bases are compounds that contain either a hydroxide, oxide or carbonate ion. All these three definitions are often used in junior science and in year 11 but none of these three definitions are adequate when describing what a base actually is. A better definition of a base is that it is a species that can accept a hydrogen ion from an acid species in a proton transfer reaction. So let's look at a reaction that shows this. The hydrogen ion is transferred from the hydrogen chloride molecule to the hydroxide ion in a proton transfer reaction. Hydrogen chloride is acting as an acid by donating the proton and hydroxide is acting as a base by accepting it. The reason that hydroxide can do this is due to the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom which is used to form a new bond to the hydrogen ion. Therefore bases are often species that contain a highly electronegative nitrogen or oxygen atom which have lone pairs on them available for bonding. You might begin to realise now that the only difference between an acid or base species is whether or not a hydrogen ion is attached. This now gives us a pair of species which we call the conjugate acid-base pair. The conjugate acid-base pair are two chemical species that differ by only a hydrogen ion. Let's look at some combinations of these by listing the acid form on one side and the base form on the other. In these two species, we can see that chloride is the conjugate base of the hydrogen chloride molecule, and nitrate is the conjugate base of the hydrogen nitrate molecule. These two species differ by only a hydrogen ion. The ethanoate ion is the conjugate base of ethanoic acid, and consequently, of course, Ethanoic acid is the conjugate acid of the ethanoate ion. In this pair, ammonia is the conjugate base of the ammonium ion. And this is an interesting one. Carbonic acid loses one proton to form the conjugate base, which is the hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate ion, which looks like this. And you may notice that the bicarbonate ion still has one proton left, so it can act as an acid too and form its conjugate base, which is the carbonate ion. Water is a really important substance, especially in acid-base chemistry. It can act as an acid 
losing a proton to form the conjugate base of the hydroxide ion, and also, just as importantly, it can act as a base, gaining a proton to form the conjugate acid of H3O+, which is called the hydronium ion, and this is a more accurate way of representing acids in solution. A species like water that can act as both an acid and a base is called amphiprotic. You may notice that the bicarbonate ion is also an amphiprotic species, so it can both gain a proton and lose a proton. But when you dissolve bicarbonate ions in water, it only acts as a base. So in summary, when an acid loses a proton, it will become its conjugate base. When a base gains a proton, it will become its conjugate acid. Just remember, the acids have the hydrogen ion and the bases don't. To help you reinforce that, let's take a look at some proton transfer reactions and equations to help you see this. In this first example, the hydrogen chloride molecule is acting as an acid, losing its proton and forming its conjugate base of the chloride ion. The water molecule in this reaction is acting as a base, gaining the proton from the hydrogen chloride and forming its conjugate acid of the hydronium ion, H3O+. When ammonia molecules are dissolved into water, an acid-base proton transfer reaction occurs. An ammonia molecule acts as a base, accepting a proton from the water molecule and forming the conjugate acid of ammonium ions. Water is acting as the acid donating a proton and therefore forming its conjugate base, hydroxide ions. And this is why an aqueous solution of ammonia is alkaline and has a high pH. In this reaction, ethanoic acid molecules are dissolved into water. The ethanoic acid molecule donates a proton to the water molecule, forming its conjugate base of ethanoate ions. The water molecule accepts a proton and forms its conjugate acid of hydronium ions. And this is why a solution of ethanoic acid, which is vinegar, is acidic. The last one is hydrogen carbonate ions, of course referred to as bicarbonate ions. When dissolved in water, they will accept a proton from the water molecule forming its conjugate acid of H2CO3. This is called carbonic acid. The water molecules lose its proton to become its conjugate base form of hydroxide ions. And that is why when you dissolve baking soda into water, the solution is alkaline and has a high pH. So that's it for now. To quote John Green, if you were paying attention, you would have learned that acids are species which are proton donors, bases are species which are proton acceptors. Acids lose protons to become a conjugate base, bases gain a proton to become a conjugate acid, and the two species then become a conjugate acid-base pair which differ only by one hydrogen ion. You should pause the video at this point and copy these outcomes out. You should also go back and find one example of a conjugate acid-base pair to include and write out one acid-base proton transfer reaction as an example. In the next video we will look at what pH actually is and how to calculate the pH of an acidic or alkaline solution.